Good morning. Um, uh, I'm Nigel Boyle. I'm the Dean of Faculty uh, here. And I have two tasks uh, this morning. Uh, firstly, to welcome the American Humanist Association to Pitzer College, uh, and then to introduce uh, Phil Zuckerman. Uh, with regard to the first task, there is the small irony that it falls to a card-carrying Irish Catholic uh, to, uh, and it's worse, uh, I'm the product of a state-funded confessional education system that uh, uh, has left its mark, but I'm, I'm in recovery, I promise. But, but none, nonetheless, uh, a hearty welcome to the American uh, Humanist Association uh, to, um, uh, to Pittsburgh College. Um, in introducing film, uh, Phil uh, Zuckerman, uh, there's uh, no qualifications needed, no irony. Uh, Phil is a fantastic colleague. I was privileged to be on the uh, APT committee that actually hired you. Remember that, that way back in the day? That was definitely one of the better days' work I've done at Pitzer. Uh, Phil is a, a, a terrific teacher, very charismatic teacher, very popular uh, with students. He's a publishing machine, uh, I think seven different books, many of which have now be, uh, gone into uh, translation in uh, other languages, uh, Asian and European uh, languages. Um, and he's a curricular leader, and it's in connection with that that we're uh, gathered here this morning. He's uh, pioneered uh, secular studies uh, here at Pitzer, and, uh, um, and this has really made uh, quite an impact on our campus and beyond. Um, so uh, it's uh, um, a great privilege to uh, welcome uh, 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 Phil Zuckerman to the podium. Phil. Thanks, Angela. Thanks for hiring me that year. <laughs> Um, so this rabbi, priest, and uh, atheist walk into a bar. No, um, thanks so much. First off, uh, it's really an honor, obviously. Thanks to the AHA, the American Human Association. I think they do fantastic work. Uh, I'm a proud member and supporter, and uh, it's great that they're here today uh, and, and, and got stuck in traffic but managed to make it on time. <laughs> so that's good. And thanks, Mark and Anna and everybody at Communications for setting all this up and preparing all this, and especially for the blueberry muffins and the coffee and the croissants. So I'm really happy. Thanks for the students that came here from the SSA and my other classes and my colleagues. And it's so nice that everybody's here. Um, so, and thanks Nigel and Tom for your support as well. So, I, I don't want to bore you too much, but I was asked to prepare a little bit, so I did. So, I just thought um, it was lucky. Two, two things happened just this last Friday that I thought, well, that's perfect for this. Um, so, the first one was a guy named Vern Bankston. He's an old professor, well, yeah, he's old. He's an old professor at USC. And he had scheduled an appointment to come and talk to me a while back. So he showed up at my office Friday morning. And Vern uh, is, studies gerontology. And he's in sociology and religion. And he was wanting to interview me and talk to me about a new project. And it's called like Spirituality Over the Life Course. And I was like, man, I'm only 46. But, um, but I didn't know, you know, and I was like, yeah, okay, fine. So he said, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm, we're trying to measure how spirituality and religiosity change over the lifetime, that it's not static, that people's relationship to these things changes. And I said, yeah, of course. And he goes, so we're, we're going to basically interview three types of people, three groups. And he said, we're going to interview uh, uh, older people who identify as religious, and we're going to interview older people who identify not as religious, but as spiritual, and then we're going to interview people, older people, who identify as secular. Now this is new. This is evidence of a change in how we're doing our social science. To include that third sec segment or sector is totally new. This was never done before. Studies on religiosity, spirituality, and the human experience from drumming to cooking to raising kids to was not acknowledging that chunk of humanity. And I thought, wow, thank you. This is great. This is great news. You're expanding. So now when people start to think about studying religiosity and spirituality, they're automatically thinking, oh, we have to include some people who are non-religious too. And that's kind of like the really joy of what secular studies is, 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 is developing. And then the second thing was, I went to the lunch for the trustees on, on Friday, so this was just after I left Vern and went to the trustee lunch, and I sat with one of the trustees and said, oh, did you see the latest Chronicle of Higher Ed? I said, no. So she told me to look it up, and I cer certainly did. So the latest 2015 uh, American Freshman National Survey just came out. So every year they do these broad national surveys of incoming college students, and, and they ask them all kinds of things, you know, political preferences, 
activist orientations, what likely majors they're going to pursue, pursue, et cetera, et cetera. And they often ask them about their religious and spiritual identification. And for the first time, they allowed them to check atheist, agnostic, or none. That had never been an option before. Can you guess how many people checked that? How many incoming fresh first years? A national random sample, 30%. 30%. I mean, this is unbelievable, right? You know, we've got, so, so this, is, this is pretty, pretty powerful. Something is happening. Uh, there's a growing swath of people who no longer see themselves as being religious, whatever that may mean, and we need to understand this growing chunk of humanity, and that's really what Secular Studies is trying to do. Um, and just last, last little factoid here. So according to the Pew's best estimate, in 2010, globally there were 1.1 billion non-religious people, and they predict that in 2020, that'll be up to 1.2 billion people. So that's a lot of people who aren't identifying as religious. Again, whatever that means, and that's our job to tease that apart. There are thousands of religious studies departments all over the world. Jewish studies departments, Islamic studies departments, Buddhist studies departments, Hindu studies departments, and that's really, really good. We need those departments. We need to understand religion and all its many uh, permutations. That's part of the human story. But another part, a bigger, a big part, shouldn't say bigger, but a big part of the human story is the secular. And we're just finally now starting to pay attention to that as historians, as psychologists, as neurologists, as sociologists, as anthropologists, as humanities and studies, studying literature and art. And so I'm just really, we have our work cut out for us and that's what secular studies is all about, um, to stro study this growing junk chunk of humanity that is non-religious um, or secular, however you want to put it. Um, and, when we f and I'll just end here. When I first started the secular studies pro program, um, most people just shrugged. They didn't know what it meant. There were a few critics, or one, uh, and, um, and uh, rather, um, but somebody said to me, uh, they said to me, well, this is really interesting, Phil, but I mean, how can you teach classes on the secular or secularity or secularism? I mean, secular only makes sense in relation to the religious. Um, they're, they're dialectically related. How can you understand one without the other? You can't really understand. Secular has no meaning if it's not in, con in, in a sort of religious context or in contradistinction to the religious. We, you can't really understand one without the other. And I said, I agree. You can't really understand one without the other. But for about 100 years, 150 years, we've really just been studying religiosity without paying much attention to the secular. So how have we been able to study religion for so long without understanding the other side as well? So I see secular studies as not competing with religious studies, but complementing it, making the seesaw more level. So now it's like, yes, we need to understand what secularism means politically, historically, culturally, philosophically, in relation to the religious. And so I like to think that we're just simply bringing a more uh, balanced approach to this study of worldviews and identities and political movements, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm happy to, to see that happening. And I'm happy you're all gathered here to, to share in this. And it's great to be recognized by the AHA. So I'll turn it over to the American Human Association. I want to introduce Roy Speckhart. Uh, Roy has served as Executive Director of the American Human Association since 2005. Uh, he also serves on the boards of the Institute for Humanist Studies, the United Coalition of Reason, the Humanist uh, Institute, the Secular Student Alliance, and the Secular Coalition for American Education Fund. Uh, he served as the Deputy Director of the Interfaith Alliance from 95 to 2001. He holds an MBA from George Mason University and a BA in Sociology. Yes, I knew I loved you. Uh, <laughs> from Mary Washington College. Uh, and he's also the author most recently of a new book that just came out, Creating Change Through Humanism, which I had the good luck of being able to blurb. So it's a great, great read. Roy, thanks for coming. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Well, the American Humanist Association has been around since 1941. And over the course of those 75 years, we've had tremendous thinkers involved from all walks of life. We've had psychologists like Abraham Maslow and B.F. Skinner. We've had feminists like Margaret Sanger, Faye Waddleton, Gloria Steinem. We've had those who are science professionals like Carl Sagan, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, like Bill Nye. Today, we add others to this pantheon, right? Um, and also, we look at exploring humanism in further depth. Humanism is the not-so-radical idea that you could be good without a god. Not too much to it. A little more to it, though. It's a progressive philosophy of life that, without supernaturalism, affirms our ability 
and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good of humanity. And with that, we thought about how we can bring this kind of activism and advocacy that humanism naturally entails um, into the university and academic setting because there is so much to be done with the changing demographics that Phil talked about that you see happening all around us today. And so with that, we decided to create this university award for philosophical diversity. And Stanford University uh, was the first recipient just two years ago. Um, and they demonstrated an openness to secularism and humanism through their orientation process and throughout with a humanist chaplain involved. Last year, we gave the award to Carnegie Mellon University, who did the same, but also had a uh, director of humanism um, that was working with students and trying to find ways to bring together aspects of philosophical and religious ideas that are common uh, regarding ethics and uh, empathy and civic duties and the like. And here we are today uh, recognizing Pitzer College for really breaking ground in an area uh, studying secularism research, such a needed thing. Here we are with the first university that's really doing it um, in that way. And so that, with that, I'd like to present this award, the University Award for Philosophical Diversity for meeting the standards of openness to humanism and humanist inquiry. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Phil, why don't you come up here? Right. Yeah, without you. All right. All right. <laughs> Great. Let me just say a few words here. Thank you, Roy, uh, for this, this incredible honor. You know, the, the AHA has always been an advocate for uh, progressive values and equality. And, you know, this is very much in line with many of Pitzer's core values. So Pitzer College is very proud to accept this award from the American Humanist Association. Thank you so much. And I'm Catholic too, so I better not say anything else. <laughs>